In this tutorial, as well as showing you a few keyboard shortcuts, I also want to talk about the importance of keyboard shortcuts. When you begin editing in any nonlinear editor and you're a new time editor, you tend to do everything by mouse. So you'll click play and you'll click stop. And you'll do everything by mouse. You'll make all your selections by mouse. If you need to do a new file, do file new. But notice, under these menus at the top, you've got keyboard shortcuts to the side. And these keyboard shortcuts are ways of being able to do things without having to use the mouse. And believe it or not, it takes a lot longer to use the mouse than it does to use your keyboard shortcuts. And the key to fast and efficient editing is actually the use of keyboard shortcuts. Now, there are some very obviously great keyboard shortcuts. I'm just going to show you a couple of them a bit later on. But if you want to know where your keyboard shortcuts are and how to find them, there are two ways of doing them. One will allow you to see them but not be able to access Sony Vegas Pro while you're using it. The other one will show you the keyboard shortcuts and you can have them on a separate screen so you can just work through them. Now, the key to using keyboard shortcuts is simply to make sure you do use them that you learn one every time you open up Sony Vegas Pro and you make sure you use it time and time again. And just keep on building up your use of keyboard shortcuts and you'll find that you're doing an awful lot more on the keyboard than you are with the mouse and your editing will get faster and faster. So how do I find my keyboard shortcuts? Well, we can find them under the options menu and you can go down and you can see you've got one that says customize keyboard. Now this particular one, now this is a, a small box it comes up with and actually it doesn't expand if you double click it you do need to drag it down to maximize its size this particular keyboard shortcut item allows you to see all the keyboards in the various bits and pieces so if i go to the trimmer here are my keyboard shortcuts for my trimmer and notice if i've got markers keyboard shortcuts for the markers going to the markers is simply the appropriate number okay so you've got all kinds of really helpful bits and pieces that you can find right so that's one way of finding it but this particular window and i'm just going to minimize it so i can zoom in this particular window is really useful because it allows you to change keyboard shortcuts. So say, for example, I'm in my track view and I want to change one of my keyboard shortcuts. So let's have a quick look. I'm going to go down and here we've got copy, cut and delete. So these are edits and transitions, so edits and what have you. But maybe what I want to do is do a copy and cut, a standard keyboard shortcut for that, which is control C to copy, control X to cut. So I can actually change or add a keyboard shortcut simply by selecting it and then going down to shortcut keys and typing in what the shortcut should be. So control C would be copy. And when I do that, it says, well, actually, at the moment, this keyboard shortcut is currently assigned to the mixing console to edit and copy. But if I do add, notice that it doesn't get rid of the previous one. It just adds it to the list. So I've actually got the same keyboard shortcut where I'm when I'm working in different places. So I'm in track view, control C will copy. If I'm in the mixing console, control C will copy. And if I want to do cut, I could select that and do control X, which is the keyboard shortcut. So remember to click in here, control X. And it says at the moment, that's the mixing console, but I can add it. And it's added it in. It hasn't actually got rid of it. It's just added it in. So if I click OK, um, let's go back to customize keyboard. And let's just check the mixing console. Here's the mixing console. And go back and let's see, have I got rid of it? So cut is still control X and copy is still control C. They're still there. I haven't actually got rid of anything. If I go back to my track view and pull down to here, there are my keyboard shortcuts that I've added in. So I have actually added in new keyboard shortcuts. Now it's possible that you've been working with a different nonlinear editor, which has got its own keyboard shortcuts, and you want to make lots of changes. Well, this is the window where you make the changes. And when you finish, notice that you can create and save your own new keyboard map. So if you do save as, you can give it your, I can call it Andrew's custom. And I can click OK. And I've saved it and I've got Andrew's custom map now. I've also got default still. So I can still go back to default or I can choose Andrew's custom map. So when I've exited this off and I come back in and open it up and it's gone back to default keyboard shortcuts, I can go in and find mine. And if multiple people use your machine and they've got their own special keyboard shortcuts that they've set up so they can work really quickly in their editing, you can create and save them. And if you don't want it, you can delete it. So I'm saying, are you sure you want to delete Andrew's custom map? Yes, I am. I don't want that. And then I've only got the default option, but you can have as many as you like here. So that's where you can look and see what you've got by expanding the box. 
So you do need to expand this box to actually see all the different keyboard shortcuts and learn them, spend a lot of time learning them. But you can't do anything with Sony Vegas while this is showing, so I'm going to click OK. The alternative way of finding them is actually under the Help menu. You'll see Contents and Index. Notice it's got a keyboard shortcut, which is F1. And then under Contents, right towards the bottom, you're going to see you've actually got your keyboard shortcuts. When you click on your keyboard shortcuts, again, I would recommend actually magnifying these. And then you can go through and you can find all the different keyboard shortcuts. For example, this is a really useful set here. If you want to focus on the timeline, so you want to switch between panels, rather than clicking on the panel, you would do Alt-0 and it would go on the timeline. If you want to go to the Explorer window, Alt-1, you see Alt-0 to 9, concentrate on different panels. And that can be really helpful just to quickly pull up the various bits and pieces that you want. So I would advise having this particular panel on a separate screen. I've got a two screens on my system. You can't see the second one. But I would shift it across to the second screen and have it available so I can pick up keyboard shortcuts if I need them and then learn one every time I open up Sony Vegas. But let me show you a couple of really useful keyboard shortcuts just to start off with. The first one is if you're sort of zoomed in your timeline and you're not sure where your cursor is and you want to actually go to your cursor, if you use the, the backslash, which is next to the Z on my keyboard, might be on a different keyboard to yours, but if you hit that backslash, you'll find that the cursor centers in view, which is a really useful way of finding it. And as we've seen before, you can use plus and minus to zoom in and out of your timeline, but you can also use the up and down arrows to zoom in and out, which is a useful keyboard shortcut. But probably one of the most useful keyboard shortcuts is for playing and pausing, scrubbing through your timeline. Bear in mind we've got the scrubber to scrub backwards and forwards that we've seen before, and we can hit the space bar to play, and hit it again to stop and return, but you don't always want it to return. Sometimes you just want it to pause where it is, and you can actually change that behavior in preferences, which we'll see a bit later. The other, the other way to do it is to sort of hit play, and then you need to pause it. So you can do Control F12. So let's try Control F12, play, Control F12, and that pauses it and brings it back there. But that's actually quite a difficult way of doing it. So Control F12 will play and pause, or hit the space bar and Control F12 to pause. That's another way of doing it, but there's a much better series of keys that are used throughout the industry. So all non-linear editors that I know of use these three keys, and they are the J, K, and L keys. J will play backwards, L plays forwards, and K stops. But it's more than that. If I tap J to play backwards, I tap it again, it goes backwards faster, faster. Each time I tap it, it keeps going, and then K stop. And then L goes forwards at standard speed, faster, 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 and K stop. So learning J, K, and L, it works in the timeline. It also works up here when we get to the trimmer window, which we've not actually got to yet. But you'll find that J, K, and L will stop exactly where you push stop, which is a much, much better way of working. And of course, you can quickly navigate backwards and forwards just using those keyboard shortcuts to quickly get to exactly where you want to be. And of course, if you want to go a few frames one way or the other, you can use the side arrows. So the side arrow will just tap a few frames one way or the other. But if you just push and hold, you'll see that it plays backwards and plays forwards just by pushing and holding those right and left arrows on your keyboard. So you can just get to frame perfection. So let's find that wave going over the top. There's that wave whoop, going over the top there. And we can look at the little wave over here going over as we go forward. And we can get to exactly where we want to get to, frame perfectly by using these side arrows. So J, K, and L, and the right and left arrows, brilliant keyboard shortcuts. Now, in a previous tutorial, we looked at placing the cursor with using this down here, and also doing an in point and an out point, or region of interest, which can be really useful for doing bits and pieces such as extracting footage or bits and pieces like that, which we'll look at a bit later on. But let's have a look at setting an in and an out point on the timeline. Now, you know you can click and drag to create an in and an out point. But also, you can take your cursor to wherever you want. Click away so they're not selected, so take the cursor here. And if I hit I on my keyboard, you'll notice that I've got the little icon that says I, the in point, is here. And if I click here and do O, look at this particular border here, this little grey line with the yellow end. If I do O, it's going to snap to my cursor. So that's now selected a region. OK, I need to click or double click on it to actually see that region if I want to actually have it fully highlighted. But it has still selected the region by doing the I and the O. 
in and out points. Now we've also seen that Alt 1 to 0 is going to go through all the various panels. So if I hold Alt 0, I know I'm in the timeline. But if I do Alt 1, I'm going to be in this window over here. Alt 2, you can see I'm in my trimmer window. And you can usually see this because if there's a cursor, it's going to flash. I think Alt 3 does the master over here. You can see that that's actually come up. And I've got a little sign around its name showing it is selected. So that's going to take them around. But if you just want to toggle through the panels, F6 will just toggle you through the, through the panels. So you can see I'm toggling through panels just by clicking F6, going through my keyboard. OK, so there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts that you can use in Sony Vegas. It will make your editing a lot quicker, and I'd advise you to get used to using them so that you become a fast and efficient editor. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this useful, and thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.